Let's run a one sample proportion test. In this particular problem, we are polling students to test our theory that more than 80% of students love math. We have surveyed 91 students and we found that 77 do love math. I'm gonna put this 80% into our hypothesis. So for step number one, my null hypothesis would be the answer is about 80%. So we're gonna say that P for the proportion is 0.8 and for our alternative hypothesis, I'm going to use that language more than, and I can say that P is greater than 0.8. Well, our hypothesized proportion is our expected value, so 0.8 goes right here in the middle at a z-score of 0. We are looking to see if we've got a significantly greater than 0.8 result. So significantly greater than points us to a tail on the right hand side and this gives me my rejection region. So here I would reject the null hypothesis, reject h sub 0, and in the middle here we would fail to reject that null hypothesis. So fail to reject. Okay, so now we need a critical score and then our test z-score, and then we can go ahead and set our conclusion up. So for step number two, I need that critical z-score. Now I've got a table over here that gives me critical z-scores for common significance levels. We were asked to test this at a significance level or an area in the tail of 0.05. We have a one-tail test and we've got alpha equal 0.05. So that gives me a significant z-score, a critical z-score of 1.645. I can also really easily find this critical z-score with my TI-84 calculator. So I'm going to go into second distribution. So I'm going to go into my distribution menu and I'm going to choose inverse norm and then hit enter. The area in my tail is that significance level of 0.05. I'm going to leave the mu and standard deviation at 0 and 1 for my standard normal curve. I can also then change this to the right tail, and I've already got that selected, but I would hit enter to select it, and then I can go ahead and hit paste and enter, and there's my 1.645. That critical value is the z-score that cuts off my rejection tail, so 1.645 lives here. Next, we're going to find that test value. So step number three is to find the test z-score, so we're going to look for that test z, and I'm I'm going to use my test results, my sample results. We were given a sample of 91, so n is equal to 91. A success rate, x is equal to 77 students that did love math. These two together give me p hat, which is my sample proportion. p hat in general is x over n, so for my sample that's going to be 77 over 91. We also have that p is equal to 0.8, that's our hypothesized proportion. So q is going to be 1 minus 0.8, and that's going to give us a 0.2. Now I've got everything that I need to compute my test value by hand, and then I'll show you how to do it more easily on the calculator. So by hand, you're gonna use this formula. In the numerator, you're gonna take your sample proportion, so p hat minus p, and then in your denominator, we've got the square root of, this is gonna be p times q, all divided by n. So the numbers that we would put if we were doing this using the formula would be that 77 over 91. So 77 over 91 minus 0.8 divided by, and then in the square root, I've got 0.8 times 0.2, all divided by n, which is 91. This is so much more easily done using the calculator. So over in the calculator, I'm gonna go to my stat menu, and then I'm gonna arrow over to tests and it brings up all of my possible tests. I'm looking for a one sample proportion test and that is number five here on my calculator. I hit enter and it's going to prompt me for these different values. P sub zero, that's my hypothesized proportion. That's going to be 0.8. X is 77 out of N, which is 91. Um, we've got for the proportion, this is our alternative hypothesis. We have a greater than symbol there. So I'm going to put greater than. I'm just going to arrow down then to calculate. 
and we get our z-score. So that z-score of 1.1007 is the z-score that we get. So our test z, whether you end up using the formula or the calculator, turns out to be about 1.1007. Now that's going to live about over here when I'm putting it in line with my other z-scores. So this is going to be my test Z. Notice that it falls into my fail to reject region. So that gives me step number four. So step number four, I would say that I do end up failing to reject. So I'm going to fail to reject that null hypothesis. And we can say that it is not significantly more than 80% of students that love math. Do take a look at this next video. I've got lots more videos on hypothesis testing. Thanks so much for watching.